Up next is vocab. Our vocab for today is independent variable. Basically, an independent variable is the x variable. We represent it on the x axis. So like um, on this little graph right here, the x axis would be our independent variable. Now, the thing that we're trying to measure is the dependent variable. So um, the dependent variable is is recorded on the y-axis. Um, on a table, the independent variable is the x-axis or the x variable, and the dependent is the y. The output in an equation is the y usually, so we call that the dependent variable, where the x is the independent variable. Honestly, we can use any letter we want. We just have to define what we want as our independent and dependent variable. So um, I could write like b is equal to 2a plus 10. And I would just need to, re to know that this is the independent and the dependent variable. Can I switch them? Absolutely. But one of the things that we should like keep in mind is that if one of the variables represents time, if it's time related, it should probably be on the x-axis as the independent variable. Okay. All right. So a relation is the relationship between an order uh, it between two numbers, so an input and an output. So we represent that as an x comma y. So a relationship between an input and an output. Everything is a relation. Everything in two variables is a relation. Now we get a little more nitpicky when we say, is our relation a function? Now a function means that every input, each individual input has its own output, own consistent output. So we have to evaluate or look at every single input to make sure it has one and only one output. Okay? So we're going to look at how that looks like on a table graph and an equation. Remember, representations. Now, don't forget to fill out your, your definitions for each one of our words in your own words, and then also create an example. You can do this at the end of the lesson. That's fine. Okay, so how do we, describe, how do we identify a function? We're going to look at the different mathematical representations and then determine if the graph is a function, let me move my face, is a function or a relation. Um, so here we go. We're going to first look at number one. I'm doing this one with you. So each, in order to be a function, each input has to have a consistent output. So we are going to look at each one of these numbers independently. So at x equals 0, what is your output? 8. Is there anywhere else in your table here where x is 0? No? OK, so I don't have any conflicting information about what the output should be when x equals 0. So each input needs its own output, OK? Consistent output. Next up. When x equals 0, what can we expect the output to be? 8. OK, so what? Is 8 the same as the output for 0? But it doesn't matter because all I'm comparing is what the relationship between the input and the output, each input to its output. OK, 2. When x equals 2, what do we think the output should be? It should be 8. Is there anything else in the table that says that we should get something else at x equals 2? Nope. So we know this is a, a function so far. When x equals 3, our output is 8. Again, is there any conflicting information about a different output at x equals 3? No. So we're good. And when x equals 4, again, also 8. So the table, and we're going to write the representation, the table is a function because each input value has a consistent output value. 
So it's okay to repeat the output values, okay? Is it okay to repeat the input values? Well, you tell me. Actually, I'll tell you. We're doing examples. Okay, so this time we look at x equals 8. When x equals 8, what is y? Let's see, y is 0. But then when I look at its neighbor, when x equals 8, what did I give her the y value? Is it 0? Because it should be the same as what I first initially thought. If it's not, if I don't have a consistent output at x equals 8, then this is not a function. Can we re so it's like if I tell you I want to press button number 8, I want to get out the same number every single time. But in this example, I get out when I press button 8, I get out a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. Is that consistent? I don't know what I'm going to get out of button 8. Okay. So this table is not a function because at x equals 8, um, the output, or there are more, there is more than one output value. Okay. So how many, in order to be a function, you need to have one output value for each individual input value. Okay. All right. You try this one. All right. I can see that the first one is a function because there are no repeating x values. So I don't have any conflicting information. So that means each input here has its own output. So the table is a function because each input has its own output. Okay, the next one. I'm going to look for double repeats in the x's. I can see that there's a repeat at 16 and 16 and at 1 and 1. So let's check out the ones. Do the outputs match? So when I press button 1, I got out a negative 1. When I press button 1, I got out a positive 1. Are these the same values? No. So is there consistency when I press button 1? Or is there consistency when x equals 1? No. So this table is not an out a function because um, at x equals 1 and at x equals 16, right here, the outputs are not consistent. Okay. Next up, we're going to look at uh, functions from a table. Sorry, we just did a table from a graph. So looking at, remember we're comparing inputs which is our x, to our outputs. So uh, each input, is there more than one output? Is there more than one y value? So I have to literally look at each input, okay? So at, whoa, computer, whoa. At x equals 0 here, it looks like my output is 8. Is there any other dot vertically here at x equals 0? No. So there's one output at x equals 0. When x equals 1, my output is 6. Is there any other dot at x equals 1? No. At x equals 2, okay, there's only one dot. At x equals 3, that's 3 comma 2. At x equals 4, I have one output of 2. x equals 5, 1, 2. <gasps> there are two outputs when x is equal to 5. So right here. This is a problem for me. I can see another place where there's two, two dots vertically. Um, so this graph is not a function because there are two outputs when x equals 5. Same with there are also two outputs when x equals 7. Okay, So we'll go ahead and write that. The graph is not, oops, is not a function because there are two 
output values, two different output values at x equals 5. There are also two different output values at x is equal to 7. Okay? Next. This one, oh, I forgot to show you the trick. Okay, so a trick to seeing if something is a function on a graph is using the vertical line test. So I'm just going to make a bunch of vertical lines. And if any point on this, if there's any vertical line that crosses two dots at the same time, or two points of the graph at the same time, the graph does not pass what we call the vertical line test. So another way to say this is because um, the graph does not pass the vertical line test, which we call the VLT, the vertical line test. Okay, and it means that there are this is a test to see if there's two outputs for one input. All right, so let's apply the vertical line test here. I'm going to put a bunch of lines. Does this line, blue line here cross more than one time on any of these vertical lines I'm making? It looks like it crosses once, 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 once. So is there any place on this graph where it wouldn't cross? where it would cross more than once. No. So this graph is a function because um, the graph passes the vertical line test, meaning there is one output for each input. All right, next up, you're trying this one. And hopefully you've already tried it. So we're going to use the vertical line test to look to see if there's more than one output for an input. And I can see there's lots of places many x values. At x equals 5, look, there's two outputs. At x equals 4, there's two outputs. At x equals 3, there's two outputs. So the graph does not pass the vertical line test, meaning that there is meaning that there is more than one output for an input somewhere on the graph. Okay. Can it happen just once? Yeah, and that's okay. If it doesn't pass at one certain x value, we don't have a function, no function, okay? Okay, hopefully you, you did this one. Is the graph a function? It is a function because, again, let's apply the vertical line test to this non-continuous graph. So that purple line crosses the graph only one time, one time, one time. At 2.5, it crosses no times. At 3, one time. At 4, one time. At 5, one time. At 6, no times. It's okay. It's okay not to cross at all. But if you cross the graph more than one time, you automatically are not a function. Okay, so for at each x value, there's only one output, or there's one output for each input. That's another way to say that. All right, check it. Now we're going to look at some points. I can organize points in a table. So I'm going to do negative 2 is my x and my y is 5. Negative 1, 8, 0, 6, 2, 7. So this is my x and my y, my x and my y, my x and my y. So each of these different x and y values. Are there any repeats in the x's? So I can either look in my points here. Are there any repeats in the x's? Nope. Okay, so that means that there's only going to be one output for each one of those those inputs. So is this a function or not? The points, or let's call them ordered pairs. The ordered pairs are 
a function because there are only there is only one output for each input. All right, you try. All right, so I organized my points into a table, and I noticed that there are only these inputs of negative two, negative one, zero, and one and two. And so there's no repeats in the x's, which means that each one of the x values maps or gives us a singular output. So when I put, press button negative two, I get I get out a zero. Okay, so on and so forth. So these ordered pairs or these the set of ordered pairs are are a function because there is only one output for each individual input.